You ever notice how talking about gas versus diesel outboards is like lighting a fuse at a boat ramp? Gas guys swear by speed, light, loud, and ready to rip. Diesel folks? They'll tell you it's all about torque, efficiency, and running forever on fumes. Next thing you know, someone's comparing fuel burns and engine rebuilds like it's a badge of honor. But here's the real question. Why are gasoline and diesel outboard engines so different? Is it physics, tradition? Or maybe it's just that one group likes their engines screaming and the other likes theirs growling. Let's dig in. This isn't just about fuel. It's about engineering DNA, performance philosophies, and the eternal tug of war between instant power and long haul muscle. Let's talk combustion, clatter, and the clash of outboard ideologies. They both burn fuel and push boats forward, but inside the engine block, they work like two completely different species. And once you see how, you'll understand why one rules marinas and the other stays industrial. Let's start with the most important difference, how they ignite fuel. Gasoline engines use spark ignition. That means a spark plug fires a tiny explosion inside each cylinder, powering the pistons with a quick, clean blast. Diesel, on the other hand, uses compression ignition. Air is compressed so tightly that when diesel fuel is injected, it explodes under pressure. No spark plug needed. That alone changes everything. Because diesel ignites under pressure, it needs stronger pistons, thicker cylinder walls, and heavier internal components. It also produces more torque, especially at low RPMs. Torque is the twisting power you feel when an engine pulls a heavy load, perfect for tugboats or military vessels. Gasoline engines, in contrast, are built to rev high and accelerate quickly. That makes them ideal for planing hulls, boats that rise and glide across water at speed. It's why most recreational outboards hit over 5,000 RPM, while diesel outboards often max out around 3,800. Let's break it down with numbers. Gasoline outboard, 300 horsepower. Higher RPM, faster acceleration, lower torque. Diesel outboard, 300 horsepower. Lower RPM, slower acceleration, but nearly double the torque. And here's where it gets interesting. The average gasoline outboard makes around 400 Nm of torque at peak power. The Cox CXO 300 diesel makes 650 Nm at just 3,000 RPM. That's a massive difference in pulling force, and it's why diesel works better for heavy hulls, like patrol boats or offshore service vessels. But there's a trade-off. That power comes at the cost of weight, vibration, and slower throttle response. And in smaller boats, that can actually become a problem. We'll dive deeper into weight in the next chapter. For now, just know this. Gasoline outboards were built for speedboats and skiffs. Diesel outboards were designed to push steel through waves. And in Chapter 2, you'll find out what happens when you try to hang a diesel engine on the back of a weekend fishing boat. It's not pretty. At first glance, they look similar on the outside, but bolt them to a transom and you'll feel the difference instantly. The weight of diesel outboards changes everything. The main reason diesel outboards are rare in the recreational market is weight to power ratio. Diesel engines require much stronger internal components than gasoline engines. That means thicker cylinder heads, reinforced blocks, heavy duty pistons, and crankshafts, designed to withstand combustion pressures twice as high as gas engines. This adds significant bulk. For example, the Mercury 300 four-stroke gasoline weighs around 600 pounds, 272 kilograms. The Cox CXO 300 diesel weighs over 866 pounds, 393 kilograms. That's a 266 pound difference for the same horsepower. And that extra weight isn't spread across the boat. It sits directly on the transom, affecting trim, handling, and safety. Smaller boats, especially those under 25 feet, aren't built for that kind of load. Add in gear, batteries, and passengers, and you risk overloading the stern, leading to poor planing, bow lift, and water intrusion during deceleration. 
gasoline engines are light enough to keep most boats on plane, meaning the hull skims over water, reducing drag and improving fuel economy. A heavy diesel outboard can prevent planing altogether, keeping the hull stuck in displacement mode, which drags fuel efficiency down and sacrifices speed. And it's not just the total weight, it's where that weight sits. Diesel engines are usually taller and more top-heavy, creating a higher center of gravity. That makes the boat feel more sluggish in turns and more unstable in rough water. There's also impact on trailering. A pair of diesel outboards adds hundreds of extra pounds, often requiring heavier-duty trailers, reinforced transoms, and upgraded lifting gear. In contrast, a 200-horsepower gasoline outboard can be installed, maintained, and lifted by a crew of two. Diesel units often require cranes, hoists, or forklift support, even just for routine servicing. In commercial vessels, that extra weight is manageable, but on a weekend boat, it's a problem that never goes away. And in Chapter 3, we'll uncover the real reason gasoline became king. It wasn't just technology, it was timing, culture, and access. Stay with me, it's where everything starts to click. Gasoline didn't win because it was better, it won because it got there first, and built an empire before diesel had a chance to speak. The first mass-produced outboard motor was the Waterman Porto motor, released in 1907, and it ran on gasoline. Just a few years later, brands like Johnson, Evinrud, and Elto exploded onto the U.S. market. These gas-powered outboards were compact, cheap, easy to start, and perfectly suited for America's growing middle class of recreational boaters. By the 1950s and 1960s, gasoline outboards were everywhere. Lakes, rivers, coastal towns. Families could buy a 9.9 horsepower Johnson at the local hardware store and install it on aluminum skiff by Saturday. No dealerships, no specialty mechanics, just plug and play boating. Meanwhile, diesel was evolving in a very different world. Diesel engines were too large, too heavy, and too slow revving for small boats at the time. They powered ships, tugs, and submarines, not fishing boats or pontoons. The first real attempt at diesel outboards didn't emerge until the late 1990s and early 2000s, when brands like Yanmar, Cox Marine, and OXE Diesel started introducing purpose-built high-torque diesel outboards. But by then, gasoline already controlled the recreational boating industry. The infrastructure was locked in. Gasoline pumps at every marina, dealers trained in gas engines, service parts, manuals, and accessories designed for gas platforms, and most importantly, consumer familiarity. In the U.S. especially, recreational boating was shaped by post-war prosperity. People wanted to go fast, spend weekends on the water, and travel light. Gasoline outboards made that dream affordable. Diesel never had that moment. And when diesel engines finally got small enough to compete, the average boater saw them as overpriced, overbuilt, and unnecessary, which, for light-duty use, they often were. So, while diesel excels in durability and torque, gasoline built the boating lifestyle. It shaped the docks, the brands, the buyers, and the expectations. In Chapter 4, we'll dive into the next piece of the puzzle. Money. Because diesel doesn't just weigh more, it costs a lot more to own, and that price tag tells its own story. For the same horsepower, diesel outboards can cost nearly double the price of their gasoline counterparts. And it's not just about the engine. Let's start with hard numbers. A Mercury 300 four-stroke, one of the most popular gasoline outboards in the world, retails for around $27,000 to $30,000 USD. Now, Compare that to a Cox CXO 300 diesel outboard, which comes in at approximately $50,000 to $55,000 USD. That's a price gap of $20,000 to $25,000 for the same 300 horsepower rating. So, what are you paying for? First, diesel engines require more robust materials. High-pressure combustion means thicker cylinder walls, stronger crankshafts, reinforced gears, and turbocharging systems. All of that adds cost during manufacturing. 
add the precision machining, composite housings, and noise reduction systems, and it becomes clear diesel isn't built cheap. Then there's regulatory certification. Because most diesel outboards are sold for military or commercial use, they must meet strict emissions and durability standards, especially in the US and EU. These certifications cost manufacturers millions, which trickle down to consumers. Maintenance also affects long-term costs. Gasoline outboards require routine servicing, spark plugs, oil changes, fuel filters, but they're relatively simple. Diesel engines need specialist knowledge, fuel injector calibration, turbo maintenance, and often diagnostic software tools that only certified mechanics can use. Even basic repairs like swapping a fuel pump can cost twice as much on a diesel system due to part complexity and labor. And then there's the cost of downtime. Diesel owners often operate commercial boats. When something breaks, it's not just repair cost, it's lost charter days, delivery deadlines, or service contracts. So diesel techs charge a premium for urgent specialized service. Now, diesel engines do offer savings. They typically burn 20 to 30% less fuel per hour and last longer in high hour applications. A diesel outboard may run 4,000 to 6,000 hours before rebuild, while a gas engine might need work by 2,000 to 3,000 hours. But for recreational boaters who only run 50 to 100 hours per year, those savings take decades to balance the upfront cost. And that's why the price gap matters. Because for the average boater, diesel's durability is impressive but hard to justify. Next, we'll explore who actually does buy diesel outboards and why. In Chapter 5, we go inside the world of patrol boats, military RIBs, and offshore work fleets. If you're running charters, patrolling borders, or hauling loads across rough seas, diesel is your tool. If you're out for a weekend cruise or fishing trip, gasoline is still your best friend. Diesel outboards thrive in commercial and military settings, where reliability, torque, and long operational life are essential. These boats often run 8 to 12 hours a day, every day. That's where diesel shines. Lower fuel burn, longer service intervals, and engines built to handle high hour counts without major overhauls. Let's look at real examples. The Cox CXO 300 is widely adopted by Coast Guards and Naval units in Europe, the UK, and the Middle East. It delivers 300 horsepower at just 3,700 RPM and produces 650 Nm of torque, ideal for pushing armored RIBs, surveillance boats, or dive support vessels. OXE Diesel, a Swedish manufacturer, produces diesel outboards ranging from 125 to 300 horsepower, used by search and rescue teams, harbor authorities, and fisheries patrols. Their belt-driven transmission reduces vibration, making them especially suited for long trolling runs or sensitive cargo. Even Yanmar, best known for inboards, launched the Detorque 111, a 50-horsepower twin-cylinder diesel outboard used in harbor boats, marina shuttles, and resort transport fleets. It offers over 1,000 operating hours between major maintenance intervals, unheard of in most gasoline outboards of similar size. The appeal isn't just performance, it's logistics. Many fleets already use diesel for onboard generators, larger inboards, and mother vessels. Carrying one fuel type across an entire operation simplifies refueling, reduces fire risk, and ensures supply chain compatibility, especially in military and humanitarian deployments. And when safety matters, diesel is king. With a higher flash point than gasoline, diesel is less likely to ignite in extreme conditions, making it the preferred choice in combat zones, disaster response vessels, and oil platform shuttles. But here's the key takeaway. These boats don't care about speed, sound, or weekend simplicity. They care about power, uptime, and survivability. That's the world diesel was built for, but it's not the world most casual boaters live in. Next, in Chapter 6, we bring the story full circle. Gasoline won the marina, diesel dominates the docks, but the future? That's a whole new chapter. Diesel outboards aren't going away. 
but they're not leading innovation either. Gasoline engines continue to evolve rapidly, while diesel remains niche, slow-moving, and commercially focused. Let's start with gas. Over the past 15 years, gasoline outboards have seen massive advancements. The shift from two-stroke to four-stroke technology gave us cleaner emissions, better fuel economy, and quieter performance. Brands like Mercury, Yamaha, Suzuki, and Honda now offer gas engines with electronic fuel injection, variable valve timing, digital throttle and shift, integrated engine diagnostics, smartphone connectivity, and app-based controls. Mercury's V6 and V8 four-stroke series, Yamaha's X20 Offshore, and Suzuki's Lean Burn Tech are examples of constant refinement. These engines weigh less, start smoother, and talk to the helm in real time. Gasoline platforms also scale down more easily. You can get a portable 2.5 horsepower gas outboard weighing just 13 kilograms or a 300 horsepower monster, all from the same tech family. Diesel, meanwhile, has progressed, but at a different pace. Cox Marine and OXE Diesel has made impressive gains in reliability, vibration control, and gear systems. The Cox CXO 300 now matches gas in smoothness and durability tests. The OXE 300 features a closed-loop cooling system and heavy-duty belt drive for commercial abuse. But innovation in diesel outboards is limited by lower market demand, higher production costs, narrow use cases, stricter emission standards in key markets. And there's another curveball, electric power. Electric outboards from brands like Torquedo, Vision Marine, Mercury Aviator, and Pure Watercraft are quietly taking market share. For small boats, lake users, and regulated waters, electric offers zero emissions, silent running, and near zero maintenance. Gasoline engines are already being hybridized. Some concept boats now feature electric gasoline hybrid propulsion, where electric motors assist planing, then switch to gas at cruise. That's a bridge diesel may never cross efficiently. The truth? Diesel will survive in fleets and defense. Gasoline will continue dominating recreation. But when it comes to tech evolution, gasoline is still moving forward, faster and farther. And what replaces both? That future's coming, just not with a fuel nozzle. Gasoline won the marina, diesel holds the docks, but the next revolution might not burn any fuel at all. Like, comment, and subscribe, and don't miss our next deep dive into the rise of electric outboards and hybrid marine power.